Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy So So, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, go ahead and hit the like button and drop a comment on our latest video, which is coming to you from episode 113, streaming right now on your favorite platform. In this clip, the heat go three and one since we last recorded. Plenty of pizza mañana for everybody. Let's see if they can keep it up. Let's, let's flip on over to a team that's actually been impressing a little bit as of late. Looking like old self. Not yet, but getting to that, that dog in them, right? Finding ways to win, not necessarily trying to win pretty. And that's our Miami Heat, man. They've improved to 10 and 11 since we've last, you know, spoken about them on the podcast. And one, one um, game behind 500. Last time we were, what, three games behind 500? Yeah, man. And, and look, they, they, they ripped off a three and one, you know, record in the last four games, which is things that we were talking about that will help this team achieve what they think they can achieve, a top four spot, a top five spot, and put yourself in a good position for the playoffs, right? But you got to be able to win consistently. And they got, they, you know, even though they lost that night that we were recording, they lost to Minnesota 105-101. Um, you know, Jimmy had missed his third straight game. No hero, no dunking. Gabe Vincent missed the game. So playing on, you know, the limited the limited squad that is available is, is not easy. And we still made it a game, right? We had a good first half, but the third quarter came out and we were just flat and they took advantage and it was a wrap, you know, because we weren't going to win that fourth quarter. But even still, to only lose by four points to an opponent who's pretty good in the Western Conference, Minnesota, and they offer, they offer us like a real tough matchups, especially on the wings with Anthony Edwards and shit, it was... An okay loss. But then you want to see them bounce back. We always talk about that. Don't let the losses turn into a losing streak. Bounce back, get a win, and, and turn that into something. They did that. And luckily, it was against a, a Charlotte team who isn't that great, right? But they do possess uh, some type of challenge to the Heat because now they have the mellow ball back, and the team is a little bit more complete, even though they, they lost Gordon Hayward for the season. I heard they're shopping bridges. I, that's the rumor right now. It's all over, like, NBA Insider on, on ESPN, you know. Do they make it happen? I don't know. Maybe, you know, because they might get desperate. But having that game, you know, two games at home, back to back versus Charlotte, even though they weren't like necessarily back to back. One was on um, Wednesday night. The other game was Friday night. But you have two chances to say, let's go beat these, this team that's not playing great, doesn't have their full squad, and they don't really have belief in themselves that they can make it somewhere, right? They're kind of just focused on one guy playing well and hoping that that guy's going to be enough to win them games. That first game that we won, 113 to 105 on one to, on Wednesday night, that that game was important because we saw the return of Hero, right? Mm -hmm. But more importantly, we've seen Caleb Martin really step his game up, right? I feel like that's the guy that we were talking about in the beginning of the year where he was like, man, if he can give us good minutes and really provide some type of offense, score games, have 17 points here and there while playing that level of defense that he can play, we may not miss P.J. Tucker as much. We may not need uh, Jay Crowder as much because we'll have a guy who can do those things, right? And maybe he's a little bit more offensive, get, offensively gifted than those guys. And to see Caleb playing well, bro, like that night, you know, he balled out 24 points, nine rebounds, was four of seven from three. Like his game doesn't look flashy. It doesn't look smooth, but he plays hard. And that's why I mentioned in the beginning of the of the segment, like, this is the dog that we were seeing in the heat before. They weren't going out there and blowing teams out of the water. No, they were going out there and winning close games. And that's the shit that we've been harboring about. Winning third, fourth quarters. Closing you know? out games. Yep. Closing out games. You know what I mean? And if you look, if you watch a lot of heat basketball like I do, man, you notice that every time you turn on the TV or you flip the channel in the third quarter, it's like, shit, these guys are battling. Oh, the team just made a 12 to 2 run on us. And it's like, fuck, dog. Case in point, in, in Minnesota, there was a, there was like a, I want to say 15 to two run that Minnesota hit in the middle of the third quarter, obviously put the game out of reach. And it was like, well, now that he got a battle all the way back to make it a close game and they did, but not enough to close out contrary to what they were able to achieve against Charlotte. They were able to close out that game on the strength of hero returning 17 points. He was also five of 10 from three pointer. And, um, you know, we got an offensive, a lot of offensive power that night. Even uh, Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry went off that game. He went off that game, dog. Finally. Finally, bro. Five of six from three. I think it was five of five from the first half. Uh, ended up with 28 points. Balled out. But 
28, bro. Like, we don't, we're not even asking you to do that every night, bro. Thank you. Like, 28, like, that's the thing. Like, if, if you ask me, like, yo, would you prefer Cal Lowry to put up 28 some nights and then eight other nights or just a flat out 16 to 18? I'm like, give me the 16 to 18 give me the every 16 single every night. night. But it's nice to see that he can still put up almost 30. Yeah, for sure. Especially for when the team needs it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this team needs scoring. And if you're going to play 36 minutes a game, 37 minutes a game, 38 minutes a game, you have to provide scoring. Like, that's like, that's the issue with Caleb Martin, right? Like, he has to con- continue to score like he's been scoring as of late because he's going to play those minutes because he's that good defensively. He helps us out huge on defense, right? Where we, where we can rely on Bam, you know, being the amazing defender to uh, that that he's gonna be, we're gonna get to that blow up dog. <laughs> and then you know, a, 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 just pretty much shut one position down on the floor, an extra position being shut down makes it harder for a team to score on us, man. Um, let's talk about that big Bam game, bro. That was the second game that we had against Charlotte on Friday night. He is him. He is him when he wants to be. Thirty eight points, be, twelve rebounds, fifteen or twenty two from the field, uh, including a perfect eight of eight on the free throw stripe, like. This dude played out of his mind, dog. And it was the aggressive bam, too. It wasn't the, I'm going to juke, I'm going to pump play, fake. The play big and get to the rim, bam. Every single time, dude. I mean, like, I, I'm sure you saw the reels that I posted on Instagram. Like, everything was bam attacking the basket. Yeah. Everything was bam attacking the basket. Which is how it should be. That's yeah. the mentality he needs to have, bro. And I get it. How know, much for, energy does it take? Right. You know, we can't play that game every single night. It's a lot to ask of him. But, you know, right now, Baba, when we're, we're sitting, you know, so far back from 500, right, step it up. Take over. Take over. Take over. That's what we've always wanted from Bam. We know he can do it. For we sure. We know he can put up this stat line, right? And he wants to be, you know, he wants to have his name up, you know, in the, the conversation of the, the, the best in the game right now. That's how you do it, bro. Yeah. And not yeah. just doing it one game. Now, nah, you need to be the guy who averages 23 to 25 points. That's right now on this team that is struggling for offense and is looking for somebody to take over. Be that guy. Take that mantle from Jimmy. He's not going to mind if you take it over. Trust me. Jimmy's not that guy. He's going to be like, shit. Oh, you're the number one now? Bet. I'm going to be the best number two out here, and I'm going to go ham. And that would be an even bigger problem for teams facing us. I don't us. think Jimmy will be number two, but. But you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if Bam can take that, hey, I'm top dog. Give me the ball. I'm going to take these fucking 22 shots a game here. Get out of my way then that just makes the team even more dangerous because all the weapons behind that fall in line and support what Bam can do. Um, and, and look, we talked about Caleb. That's another game that he had 20 points, back-to-back games where he had uh, really good performances for the Heat. Um, you know, 20 points for that, went 7 of 11 from the field while playing good defense, and the Heat ended up winning the game 110 to 107. And with the with these two, man, I don't have a stat for it right now as far as second-chance points and, and offensive rebounding. But they go hard. That's so that that's where last year, right? Our 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 uh, unlikely heroes, right, were, were, yeah. would come up, man. Those hustle plays, yeah. Those plays, those those scrappy ones, where it's like, yo, you you know, we didn't get the shot, like we ran the play perfectly, and we didn't get the shot off like how we wanted to. But you got in there, and you you boxed out, and you got the rebound, or you tipped it out to somebody, give us another chance, and we're seeing more of that now than we were seeing, you know, two weeks ago. Or even the hustle of saying, "Damn, I took the shot. It's off. I know it's off. I'm going after that rebound." Bow. Follow your shot. I'm following the shot, dog. That's like basic high school yeah, basketball yeah. 101, For dog. Sure. If you don't feel like you're going to drain it and you think it's a little off, go after it. You know what I mean? Because who knows? Maybe you get a hand on it. Maybe it goes out of bounds on the guy. Whatever. You need to have that type. This game is all about hustle. It's all about hustle. The plays that these guys run, every team in the NBA knows what every team in the NBA is going to run, especially in the important minutes. The difference is who executes better and who hustles more to out-execute the other team. That's what basketball is about, man. You know what I mean? So, like, it, that's why I feel like Bam should be able to take over. You know what I mean? Because he has the youth right now. He has the experience to go along with his youthfulness, and he can really exploit a lot of those matchups for the Heat, man. You and know, was, and, and take was, over. It was nice to see him do it back to back games. Yeah, man, because he even killed it against Atlanta, dog. You know, um, off again. It was like, okay, Bam went off, and it's like see him go off one more time. It's like, okay, now maybe he's starting to figure something out. For sure. And look, more importantly, that snapped the seven game road streak for the Heat. We hadn't won. A road game in seven road attempts, you know, and it took Bam to say, get the fuck out of my way. 
I'm going to take these 20 shots. He was 13 or 20 from the field. And we're going to win, especially in the third quarter where I, where I said where we struggle the most. This dude really asserted himself, had 14 points in the third quarter, huge, all because huge. he was just going after every play, whether he was going to the rim, getting getting fouled and hitting free throws. But he was just going to say, give me the ball on offense. I'm going to run it. Give me the ball on offense. I'm going to run it. And that's the bam. That's the fucking bam that can be one of the best, if not one of the greats for fucking Miami Heat history. Absolutely. But he needs to carry that within him. And needs to carry these type of performances over and over and over and over and over again. Yep. Like I, I like I don't need the thirty points, but I need the aggressiveness. I need you taking twenty shots per game because it seems like that's the magic number. Whenever he can touch the ball enough, where he can shoot the ball or get close to the rim and have twenty looks at it, then he does good things. And 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 more importantly, he always follows that up with good performances on the free throw line. Bam is not that type of typical big guy who gets to the free throw line and he's missing a bunch of shots and he's like one of two, like two of eight or some shit. Nah, this dude is going to get to the free throw line and make his free throws. Case in point, six of six against the um, the Hawks. And he was eight of eight uh, against the, Hor- the Hornets in that second game. So like, again, being realizing that my aggression is going to lead to easy points, whether it's dunks and layups or me getting fouled and getting the big other big guy in trouble and going to the free throw line where I know I can shoot 80%, 90% if I'm really focused. And and that just makes Bam so dangerous, dog. Like, for real. Like, it makes him one of the better players in the NBA, dog. But he needs to have that drive every game. I just wonder if he has the tank for it. What's his conditioning like? Is he going to be able to be the number one on a squad for the entire year? Let's see. This is the this could be the breakout for him. Let's see. This is the test right here. Yo, uh, we got a shout out Hero too. Yeah, In, in that game. He had his first career triple double. Yeah, 11 man. 11 points, 10 assists, and 11 rebounds. That dude, man. You know, hustle. Hustle. That's, that's hustle. That's a hustle triple double. And more importantly. Right? Yeah, for sure. More importantly, that's him realizing, damn, Bam is taking over. Let me do my thing to support that guy going off. Oh, there's a loose bomb going after. Oh, shit, we can get this pass off. I'm going to pass it. Damn, I can get a wide open three here. I'm going to take it. Those are the things that help Bam continue to do his thing. But you can't be timid about it, right? You can't be like like a days ago about it. You need to have that hustle. Even Caleb Martin, man, another 20-point game. Three games in a row where the dude dropped 20 points. 20 points, nine rebounds on eight of 12 shooting. In those last four games, he's averaging 17.8 points, shooting 39% from three-point line from the last five games. Aggressive Caleb. Effective Caleb. Jimmy said it earlier. When Caleb plays well, he can hit shots and be effective on offense. We're going to win games. I, I feel the same way about Bam. When Bam is the one and the main guy driving the offense, we're going to win games. Everybody else can fall in line after and just do what you got to do. Tyler, do your job. Jimmy, do your job. Kyle, do your job. Caleb, keep hustling. And we'll find ourselves winning games, man. And like, you know, it's, it was a great start to the road trip to get that monkey off your back, right? Snap that seven game skid and say, all right, look, guys, we proved it to ourselves that we can do it. Let's go out there and continue to put up this performances now the only bad part about it is that you're going to be facing tough teams right you got boston back to back you got a you got we're playing boston on wednesday and then we're playing again on friday so we're gonna have to hold off on pizza mañana until thursday but you know those two games are are gonna be a real test man for the heat because not only is boston playing really well excuse me and obviously they're the number one team in the east 16 and 4 but like that's a team that we know we're going to end up having to face at some point in the playoffs. So you need to have that mental fortitude to say, we this is a playoff game. Like, I got to treat this like a playoff game. I got to walk in there with my playoff music and playoff drope because I got to treat this like a playoff game because I'm going to be back in this building in a couple of months. That's a really good game for Bam to go off. Yeah. It's nice to do it against the Hawks and it's nice against to do it you know, against Charlotte. You do it against the Boston Celtics. You put up 30 points. Mm. 10 rebounds against the Celtics in Boston. Now we're in on, now, Boston, now we're on to something. Now so that's we, the expectation now for, for that game for Bam. That's a great fucking point, man. Because if, if you're a hundred percent right on that, like if Bam can show up to Boston and keep this same momentum, the same mentality, the same type of aggression towards the offensive side of the basketball, uh, not only does it, I feel like 
I, it, it will put him back in that conversation because, like you said, he'll be doing it against one of the best in the in the game right now, in Jason Tatum, who's a guy that they're constantly comparing each other to. So you want to go out there and have a good performances in a city like that, man, and, and give those guys two losses back to back with you being the main guy beating them. That should be really impressive because then you got a Monday game while we come back to record against Memphis on the road. That's, a, uh, I think, a 9 o'clock start for, for us here on the east side. But Memphis is another team that's balling this year, playing really well. Uh, third that's in the, another in good the West. team with a lot of good chemistry. And a lot of tall dudes. Like I mentioned, Anthony Edwards, those guys gave, gave us a lot of problems when they were visiting down here. They're 12-8. Yeah, they, they got Steven Adams. Steven was, Adams is a things. freaking wild Freaking man, dog. I don't know how they allow that guy to play basketball, dog, for real. <laughs> that guy's a beast, bro. That guy's just... And he's the nicest guy, let me he tell is. you, dog. He is I love, the nicest I guy. love the clip, though, of him taking one of the Grizzlies' towels from their hand and giving it to John Morant. Like, yeah. nah, like he needs this more. Yeah. Like, I, like that, tell, that, that one little clip tells you so much he's about... He's probably like, the greatest teammate. It tells you about him. It tells you about Ja. It tells you about the team. You yeah, know what I mean? And that sure. one little ass clip. Well, let me tell you my favorite Steven Adam clips. Um... You know, he's signing autographs and like walking, you know, pre warm up. This is in the in the warm up. And some kid says, Hey, can you sign my hat? And he goes, No. What's the magic word? The kid says, Can you please sign my hat? And he's like, Hell yeah, I'll do it. Bam. And then he like everybody else was like, Can you please? Can you please? Dog, those are the little things that athletes do. You know what I mean? That make it be like, Yeah, bro, I wish that's what would be the coolest part about being an athlete. You know what I'm saying? Being oh, yeah. able to give back. But to wrap up, man, with the heat, I feel like we, we're we going to need more of these performances from Jim, from Bam this year, dog. Yeah, I get it. Jimmy's the man. He's he's obviously our number one and shit. But I need Bam to really take this team under his wing, under his wing and say, you know what? Whether we win or lose, we're dying with my performance. We're going to die on my performance. We're going to ball out. I'm going to do my absolute best to put up 30 and 10 every single game. And whatever happens, happens. But I need that 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 type of aggression from no doubt. Let's see, man. It's a great start to the road trip, bro. We got to continue with that momentum, man. Continue with that momentum.